Good evening and welcome to our midweek Bible study here on this Wednesday, May the 13th. I'm glad that you've made time this week to spend with us as we consider a few things from God's Word and spend a few moments together virtually as we are gathering. Uh, a few announcements for you, especially for our Malvern Hill folks. A reminder that in the morning at 9.15 we will have our weekly prayer call by Zoom. So you um, have received information about that in your email in the past. I'll make sure you get another invitation tomorrow morning ready for you. You can click on that and join via video or you can call in and, and join via um, teleconference. Also want to remind you that this Sunday morning we are going to be a little different in our worship. We're still going to gather at 1030. We're still going to gather out in front of our sanctuary. But this Sunday morning we're going to invite those of you who are comfortable doing so to bring chairs or blankets and to spread them out in the grass, on the sidewalk, in the edge of the parking lot. Um, and you can enjoy or participate in, I should say, the worship service from uh, the comfort of your blanket or your chair. We're going to ask you to make sure that you maintain the social distancing that we've been uh, encouraged to keep from our governor. Some of you will not feel comfortable doing that, and that is fine. We're going to make sure that we reserve parking spaces close enough for you to be able to see from your car. For those of you who would prefer to remain in your vehicle during our service this Sunday morning. I also want to remind you that we have a survey that's been emailed out to you. We'll have some paper copies of that. If some of you hadn't had an opportunity to fill that out online that you could get here uh, on Sunday morning when you gather for worship, we really need you to fill out that survey. It just kind of helps us to gauge the temperature of our congregation, uh, not, not your physical temperature, of course, uh, though that would be important, uh, but to gauge the temperature of our congregation as we consider decisions for how and when we would reopen for indoor worship services. So uh, you're, many of you have already done that, and I really appreciate that. I ask you to uh, pay attention to that, though. Uh, for those of you that haven't filled it out, get that filled out for us so that we can be aware of exactly how you feel about the decisions we would make moving forward. I am, I am grateful for the way we've been able to connect uh, via YouTube. Uh, those of you that are watching at home right now, especially, I, I spoke with one of our senior adult ladies today um, uh, who uh, told me that she watches on Sunday mornings, and then she watches again sometime during the week, and she watches on Wednesday nights, and so uh, she just told me what a joy it's been for her. Of course, I just shake my head to consider that anybody would look at me that much and, and be willing to listen, but uh, I know that uh, just that sense of normalcy has been so good for me and for many of you, even though it's not exactly what we want. We're grateful for these opportunities, and so I'm just thankful that you're with us. Uh, I know that there's some of you who are watching not only right here in Camden, not only as a part of our church. I, I've, I've been told about people watching in other countries, uh, missionaries, uh, missionary friends of mine that are watching. Uh, some of your family members in other states are watching. Some of my family members in other states are watching. And, and so the opportunities that we have have been really awesome through these services we look forward to the day when we can gather together again, but until then, we continue to praise the Lord for the opportunities that He's presented to us. Tonight, we're going to spend just a few minutes in the book of Psalms. We're going to be in Psalm 122 and Psalm 123. Uh, I'm going to read those Psalms to you, and then we will get started. I apologize that tonight we don't have the Scripture verses on the screen for you. We're having all sorts of internet issues here at the church for some reason on Wednesday afternoons. For the last two or three weeks, the internet has decided to give us fits, and so uh, that's happened to us again today, but I can read to you, and if you have a Bible there uh, with you, I'd encourage you to open it up and to read along. Psalm 122, beginning in verse 1, the Bible says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem built as a city that is bound firmly together to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, as was decreed for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. Their thrones for judgment were set, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they be secure who love you. Peace be within your walls and security within your towers. For my brothers and companions' sake, I will say, Peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. To you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maid servant to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God till he has mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us. For we have had more than enough of contempt. Our soul has had more than enough of the scorn of those who are at ease, of the contempt of the proud. Pray with me together. Father, as we look forward to the day when we will come back into this building and we can 
be thankful, Lord, to come back into the house of the Lord. May we be glad and grateful and, and thankful when we can worship you, regardless of whether that be indoors or outdoors or wherever it may be. Lord, show us how we can be honored through these opportunities. But Lord God, more than anything else, Father, show us how we may honor you and glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Does church excite you? Uh, I know that during this time of, of pause or shutdown or whatever you want to call it, uh, we've longed for community. We've longed for our church family. My children will watch this tonight, and I can't tell you how many times my own kids have said, I just miss my church. Our students have begun to gather socially distanced throughout uh, the week for the last two weeks, they're, they're putting chairs out on the lawn here at the church and spreading out about 10 feet between each of them. And they are just loving the opportunity to see one another, to hear God's word, to engage with one another. And, and, and so many of us are that way. Some of you stop by the church occasionally throughout the course of the week and, and your feet just seem to be planted in one place as you, 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 you talk and, and we catch up a little bit on Sunday mornings. We're watching and paying attention to the fact that um, people are, are, are lingering just a little bit longer after our parking lot services. Uh, keep distance for the most part, but lingering a little bit longer just to talk because we miss the fellowship of the saints. We miss the opportunity to come together, to study God's Word, to pray for one another, to be sharpened by one another, to be shaped by one another. Uh, but, but listen, distance makes the heart grow fonder, doesn't it? We, we, we probably are missing church so much right now because somebody told us we can't go there. I was watching a brief interview with Adam Sandler, the actor and, and, uh, and comedian, and uh, somebody asked him, how was he dealing with this? And he said, you know, I, I like it. I, I don't have a problem when my wife says, do you want to go somewhere? I said, no, I don't really want to go anywhere. He said, but that's when I'm in control, I don't want to go anywhere. But now that they told me I can't go anywhere, I want to go everywhere. Distance makes the heart grow fonder for us. And so for some of us, all of a sudden, we long for the church in a way that we've never longed for the church before. I, I spoke on this very same passage of scripture uh, a little over a year ago, and, and I asked the question, does church excite you? Well, I, I, I asked that at that time with, with a reminder of the challenges that come and all the things that can get in the way, and, and today, I don't, I don't ask you, does the church excite you, but do you miss the church? Are you anxious for the church? The Psalms that we've just read, Psalm 122 and Psalm 123, are Psalms of Ascent. What that means is that the pilgrims coming into Jerusalem as they would go up the hill towards Jerusalem and then ultimately towards the temple, towards the house of the Lord, these are songs that they would sing as they approached the place of God where they would worship. And so they would, they would sing their beginning in Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Many of you are going to be glad. I've enjoyed to see some of the, uh, the little gifs and the, the, the videos that have been posted on social media for people uh, that, that just show what's it going to look like when people say come back to church. And they show people just running down the aisles or running into buildings. And, and I, I know that's going to be for me. I can't wait for that day. Uh, I, I'll be honest with you, on Easter Sunday when we gathered for the first time in our parking lot, I didn't sleep on that Saturday night because I was so excited to be with you all and to preach to you all. I know the joy that there is to see you again. And, and so for many of us, we are reminded right now that we can be glad and excited and happy when they say, let us go into the house of the Lord. But this morning, or it's not morning, is it? I got a little carried away. This evening, I, I just want to wrestle with, why haven't we always been glad? What is it that's kept us from experiencing joy in the house of the Lord? Uh, one of the things is we've been too comfortable. We've been too comfortable. As a result of our comfort, there was a belief that the church would just kind of always be there. And it'd be there when I got to it. You know, we, we, we know what it's like to grow comfortable in relationships. You know what it's like to forget to call your mom for a week or two because the thought is that she'll always be there, right? Until all of a sudden you can't go see her because of coronavirus or whatever it may be. We've been so comfortable with the thought that the church would be there when I was ready for the church that we've not been excited and anxious. We've not been glad to go into the house of the Lord. Jesus warned a rich young ruler and, and, and he warned the rich all over the place that there was dangers for them because they were so comfortable. As a matter of fact, he said to one person, he said, it's easier 
for a camel to get through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to get into heaven. Why? Because the comfort that our wealth brings, and I say our because as Americans we are a wealthy people, the comfort that our wealth brings to us causes us to not necessarily rely upon upon the Lord. Uh, so part of what's kept us from being glad to run into the house of the Lord is that we've been, we've been comfortable. Some of what's kept us from being glad and excited to come into the house of the Lord is that we've been distracted. Now this sort of goes hand in hand with comfort, but what are the things that have distracted you? I, um, I don't know if you've uh, ever seen any of these uh, things that talk about doing a digital detox or anything like that? I've read several books along those lines. And one of the things that they recommend is, is uh, a 30-day fast from, from all things digital. I've never actually done this, but a 30-day day fast from, from all things digital, especially from, from all social media platforms and everything else. And at the end of that 30 days, rather than just turning your phone back on and jumping into everything, to actually sit down with a piece of paper on a marker board and to identify the things that would add value to your life and to, to consciously make the decision, I'm going to let this back into my life. I, I think there's going to be a time... For many of us on the back end, whenever the back end of this, this, this coronavirus pandemic, this lockdown comes, whenever that's, there's going to be a time, I believe, when many of us need to sit down with a piece of paper or sit down in front of a marker board and to ask the question, not just can I run back to normal, what are the things I want to allow back into my life? Let me look at the things that, that I've lost. Let me look at the things that, that, that I've not been doing. And let's ask the hard question, how many of those things had value or how many of those things were just distractions? Part of the reason that we're sometimes not anxious and excited and glad to come into the house of the Lord is because we've been too distracted. What are the things? Sports, hobbies, travel, family time, TV, all the things that can distract us and take us away from the joy of the Lord. Titus chapter 3 uh, says this, For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. We once were foolish, disobedient, and led astray, he says. But the time has come when we've got to avoid all the things that would pull us astray and instead focus on the joy that we have in Christ. Y'all, the fact that nobody is allowed to be gathering, I, when I say allowed, we as a church body have made that decision. Our government hasn't. It's not allowing anybody into the building to gather together to worship because we, we do believe right now that that is the safest, physically safest decision that we can make. Many of us are so anxious to get there, but it's all because we can't. Y'all, when the distractions of life return... Are you going to allow those distractions to crowd out the joy and eagerness that you have for worshiping the Lord together with the church family? Or are you going to make worship a priority and force those other distractions to the edges of your life? You've got to make those decisions. Uh, what, what are some other reasons you haven't been glad? Sometimes we've not been glad because we've just been entirely too self-centered. Sometimes you don't get excited about going to church or being a part of your church because you're just too self-centered. Now, don't, don't realize, I, I, you don't realize it's all about you. I'm convinced that our culture breeds self-centeredness. iPhones, iPads, microwaves, everything is all about me. Um, I, 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 I caught myself, so, so just so we're all clear, I can fall right into this trap. Sitting on the couch with my wife the other day. She was on one end, laying down, I was sitting on the other end, and... Uh, um, we, we, we had just gotten new phones. We had uh, some phone crash issues last week that created problems. And, and I sat down with this shiny new telephone, and I pulled it out, and I opened up, and I began watching a movie on my phone with my wife on the other end of the couch. She said, what are you doing? I said, shh, I'm watching a movie. She said, really? Really? I was. Just think of the self-centeredness of that. As opposed to actually engaging with her, I was engaging in a world all my own. A world that I could control. A world that I was in complete control. As a matter of fact, I didn't want to watch the whole movie. This is how self-centered, how, how much control I had. I didn't want to see the whole movie. I just wanted to watch a clip about this long. 
And so I took my phone and I took my finger and I drug the little thing all the way across until I got to the part in the movie where I thought it was about the part I want to watch. And then I watched for about 20 seconds and realized it wasn't quite there. So I fast forward a little more and a little more until I got to the five minute clip out of the two and a half hour movie I wanted to watch. And I sat down for five minutes and I ignored my wife and I watched five minutes of the movie. I turned it off and we went to bed. Okay? Now, what, what, what is that? There's, there, there, there's creation of, of, of a self, a Craig-centered central universe right there in that little place. And as a result of all the things that create this idea of self-centeredness, church begins, be, begins to be pushed to the periphery. Because church by its very nature is really not about you. It's not about you at all. It's what Rick Warren famously said in The Purpose Driven Life. It's not about you. We're in the book of Hebrews on Sunday mornings right now. And and in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24, we're urged not to forsake the gathering together of ourselves as a group of believers. I actually talked about this on my podcast last week with Amy Bird, if you hadn't seen that. Uh, but, But there in Hebrews 10, 24, and 25, there's a reminder that we gather, we, 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 we don't forsake the gathering together of ourselves, not just for you. It's primarily not about you. It's about the church body. It's about everybody else. Part of the reason we've not been glad to go into the house of the Lord is because we're more concerned with me than we are with everybody else. And the church in its nature is about Jesus and the body. And you're a part of that body, but you're only a part when you are drawn into God's church and drawn into the worship services among God's people, the spotlight is never on you. The spotlight is always on Jesus. And then it's spread out across the entire congregation on the body that is gathered together, who are edified and built up with a purpose and a plan. Why have you been glad to come to the house of the Lord? Because you've been too self-centered. We've all been there. And listen, coronavirus right now, shut down, COVID-19 is reminding us that we're all in this together we're all in this together and then finally we've been too proud now psalm 123 shifts gears psalm 123 is a prayer for mercy mercy is defined this way as compassion or forbearance shown especially to an offender or to one subject or or to one who is subject to one's power mercy by definition is an act of kindness from a superior to an inferior person so he says i lift up my eyes O you who are enthroned in the heavens, behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, he says, God, I look up as one who's waiting on somebody to give me something. As the eyes of a maid servant to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God till he has mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Our soul has had more than enough of the scorn of those who are at ease, of the contempt of the proud. This is the plea of a proud man who says, Lord God, have mercy. Y'all, we never come and ask anybody for mercy until we're willing to acknowledge that we can't do it all on our own. Until we're willing to put our own pride away. We're willing to put our own abilities aside and we come and we say, God, I need you. That's one of the things that keeps people from being fully engaged and fully involved in the life of the church. is pride. A pride that says, I don't need anybody else. I don't want anybody else in my business. Why should I contribute financially to the needs of the church? I can spend my money on what I want to spend my money on. I can do me. And the church calls you something that's far bigger than yourself. The church calls you to to die to self and live to Jesus and live to others. The church, and and, and God's word in particular especially, calls you to love your neighbor as you love yourself. To put others' needs ahead of yourself. Y'all, Part of the reason that some of you haven't been glad to come into the house of the Lord has been because it's the house of the Lord and it's not your house. We've been too prideful and our pride has robbed us of worship. Our pride has robbed God of the glory that is due His name. Y'all, I look forward to the day when we can come back in this place and worship. But can I tell you this, though? You don't need to come back in here to be glad to run into the house of the Lord. God can be worshipped right where you are. And He's worthy of your worship. He's worthy of your praise. And yes, these days are weird and different. And as a result, we don't get to do things the way that we want to do, when we want to do, exactly as, as, as we would have done them. We're not doing things as we hope to be doing them at some point in the near future. 
but it's what it is right now. So I ask you, are you willing? Are you willing today to be glad to walk into the presence of the Lord? Are you willing today to be uncomfortable? Are you willing today to give up on your distractions? Are you willing today to walk away from your self-centeredness? Are you willing today to lay down your pride? And to worship Jesus right where you are. Are you willing to show up for a parking lot service? To gather together on the lawn here, uh, whether, whether on a blanket or, or, or in front of your, your chair there, and just to sing praises to the Lord. He's worthy. He's worthy. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'll be glad when they allow, well, when we are all comfortable gathering back in this place. I'll be glad. But folks, can I tell you, we can worship Jesus. We can worship Jesus outside. We can worship Jesus in our homes. We can worship Jesus right where we are. And the last thing that we should ever allow a pandemic to rob us of is our commitment to glorify the Lord and to carry the gospel to the ends of the earth. The mission of God is not thwarted because of this. And our responsibility to worship him has not changed. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'm glad when that gathering is outdoors. I'm glad when it's indoors. I'm even glad to offer it to you today over the internet. Why? Because God's worthy, regardless of what my circumstance or situation is. Y'all, I look forward to when it all shifts. And we all come back into this place together. But until then, what a privilege it is to know. That our God does not live in houses made by hands. We have a God who is ever present among us in the person of his Holy Spirit. And we give him praise, glory, and honor for that. Thank you all for being a part of this this evening. I look forward to all the things that are ahead of us. I do encourage you to run to our website where you can find more information. Look on our YouTube channel. There's a link there on our website at www.malvernhill.org. Um, Kevin is continuing to put content up, some, some good Bible study materials. Uh, Adam's putting some stuff up for our students. Um, we, are, we, are, we, we have more life groups who are trying to do Zoom stuff and, and trying to get involved and find ways to connect with one another. I'm, I'm really glad for that, really excited to hear that. Uh, and, and then, of course, um, you, can, you can run to, to my own website at craigthompson.org, and you can find information there. You can also find uh, podcasts I've been putting out uh, either on my website or on iTunes. At, it's called The Ordinary Christian Podcast. You can just search for that and find it. Um, you can even share those things. You can email or, or text out any links to any of our services, to these podcasts, all that stuff. You can share it and use this as an opportunity uh, to communicate with others the, the great things that are happening in church and to communi- communicate the gospel. Again, thank you all for being with us. Thank you for tuning in. I'm going to pray with you one more time, and then we will dismiss you to have a good evening. Father God, I thank you for this privilege to come together. Lord, we, uh, we acknowledge that you're King of kings and Lord of lords, and today I pray. I pray, Lord God, that you be with our church, be with our world. Lord, we do pray that you bring an end to this. Father, we don't, don't, at at this point in time, Father God, we we don't care how, Lord, so long as you receive glory. Father, you're you're wise beyond our understanding. I pray for doctors and nurses who who are uh, working to keep us healthy. I pray for scientists who are working to find a cure. Lord God, I pray for our government officials who... Uh, I, I do believe, for the most part, are, are doing everything they can to make right decisions uh, through the haze of, of a rapidly changing understanding of this and, and through the ignorance that just necessarily exists because it is new. Father, I pray you give them wisdom. Pray for governors and mayors. Pray for our president, our, our Congress, our senators, Lord God. Pray that you'd be with us as a church body as we try to make decisions and for other churches across our country and world. And Lord God, we do pray for the gospel message. We know it's going out and in force across the internet right now. And we pray, God, that it would bring about uh, uh, a revival in, in our churches and awakening in our land, that there would be an openness to the gospel that perhaps we've never known in our world. Uh, and, and as a result, there would be a great harvest of souls. We pray these things in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you all for being with us tonight. Have a good week.